Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. Back with another video. I see a trend on YouTube lately that is top five ex most expensive games in my NES collection or top five Genesis games that are over $100 or all these value-based videos and content, which at first, the first couple I saw were kind of like, eh, everybody can look up price charting, but it's kind of neat, kind of a cool idea. So I figured I'd participate uh, for my list. I am doing all the games in my NES collection that are triple digits so or more. So anything that's 100 bucks or more loose price charting, uh, they may change, you know, depending on the market conditions. These heavier games tend to uh, kind of be a little bit more stable than some of the mid-tier games. Uh, so, you know, a lot of them are pretty solidified in the more than $100 range. And I got a couple really spendy ones. Uh, but anyways, uh, just figured I'd throw mine out there. Uh, if anyone's interested in checking them out, uh, they're all... They're all great games. Well, not great. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert: one in the one in the middle of the pack here is expensive, but not great. Uh, most of these are good games. Let's put it that way. All right. So without further ado, let's get into the list. Uh, I got six here. So let's start with number six. Number six on my list is Kickmaster. And Kickmaster is a kind of hidden gem, I would say, a deep cut, if you will. It is uh, developed by a little-known developer named Kid, and they did some other awesome games on the NES, also a little bit pricey. Uh, they did G.I. Joe, uh, both G.I. Joe games. Uh, the second one was published by Capcom, but they are indeed the developer for both games. I prefer the first one. A Real American Hero, which is actually about 80 bucks loose, so that just barely uh, missed the list here today, but uh, that happens to be my favorite game of all time. So when I heard that Kickmaster, uh, published by Taito, uh, was developed by the same guys as my G.I. Joe games, I was all about that. Uh, it's a unique game. Uh, it's side-scrolling, a little bit of RPG-type elements with some upgrades, or you upgrade your character. Uh, I mean, you're kicking the entire time. That's your main weapon. Uh, you can upgrade your kick. Uh, it's a it's a different game, uh, but I highly recommend it. Amazing graphics. The graphics are super good in this one. Uh, so that's my number six. Number five. Number five is a well-known franchise put out by probably the first or if not second well-known developer on the NES back in the day and that comes out of the Mega Man franchise and those of you that are Mega Man fans know that it is obviously number five okay that's a hundred and twenty two fifty not for me kid I don't live here though they increase the size of the diameter of the, the charge shot making it a little bit overpowered uh, but I still like it and I enjoy it I've not played all the way through this game yet, but uh, what I've played I enjoyed. There's a few levels that have some gravity mechanics that are interesting. Uh, but overall, it's Capcom, it's Mega Man. Go try it out. Solid game. Alright, here is the stinker. Uh, of course, it is put out by Konami. However, it is not like the first two games. It is, of course, Contra Force. <laughs> And I will be putting all the price charting uh, prices up there in case anyone's curious. But uh, this game, you, you pop it in, you boot it up, and you're like, oh, yeah, Contra, let's go. And then it's like it runs at half speed. And you're like, what is wrong with this cartridge? It, from what I've been told on numerous videos out there, that it's a Japanese-developed game that is not Contra. And they brought it over to the North American release and decided to slap the Contra brand on it. Did it help it sell copies? I have no idea, because this was 1992. Kind of late in the NES life cycle. But anyways, expensive game, not great. Alright, uh, we got three left. Uh, this next one is a game that 
when I got into retro gaming, I immediately recognized from my childhood, it is a fantastic game, very nostalgic for me, and I was so fortunate to have a childhood friend of mine, shout out to Nate if you're out there, who had this game that we played when we were just wee little boys. We were probably eight years old, nine years old, played it in his basement, in his house, and man, this game is awesome, and so glad to get it back in the collection. And that's Bucky O'Hare. This is a fantastic game. Great music. Run and gun action. Switch out your characters when you uh, get new characters on each level. After you rescue them. Fun, fun game. A little bit on the harder side. But it's, and this one is worth the price of admission. I know it's expensive, but <clears throat> it is a great game. Highly recommended. All right, we're down to two. Can anyone guess the developer? I've already listed off a really expensive Konami. Uh, so that leaves us with purple labels. And those of you that know purple labels know I'm talking about Capcom. Capcom in the 90s on NES brought a few things. It brought Disney. It brought Mega Man. It brought expensive cartridges in the year 2024. <laughs> those three things. So, highly sought after though, and great games. This one is probably not worth the price of admission. The first one is more nostalgic to me. I had never played the second one. It is the second, uh, second in the series. It plays a lot like the first game, and that is DuckTales 2. Now, DuckTales 2 is expensive because it had a short run. Uh, not a lot of copies were produced. Uh, but it's still a great game, still developed by Capcom, still bright, vibrant, feels like you're playing the cartoon. I love DuckTales, just love DuckTales. So nostalgic for me, watched the cartoon like crazy when I was a kid, played the original NES game, didn't know the sequel existed, but happy to have it in the collection. And Rom, shout out to you, he set me up with this bad boy. All right, that leaves, that leaves my last one, my heaviest of heavies. Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? What? I don't play it a ton. Um, there is other ways to play it. There's a GBA collection out there from Capcom that you can play this game. Highly recommend to do that or emulate or whatever you got to do to play it. It is a great game. I do recommend playing it. And that is, any guesses at this point? Mighty Final Fight. This one... It's fun. It's just stupid fun. It uh, You level up your characters. You develop new moves. Uh, it's Final Fight on the NES. Uh, I tend to like uh, Streets of Rage better on Genesis than Final Fight. But you know what? If you're st stuck in 8-bit world and you want to you know, get a good beat-em-up, this is probably the best one. Uh, if not, it's in the top three. Uh, I'd say Turtles 3 is my favorite beat-em-up on NES, in case anyone's curious. But... Uh, yeah, it's it's a great game, uh, fun, colorful graphics, fast, pretty fast gameplay, a little bit of screen flicker, which is going to be expected in mid '90s NES days. Uh, but it is an absolute banger to have in a collection. Happy to have it. Don't know how long I'll hold on to it because you know I may change my collecting uh, goals and trade it off or sell it at some point. But as of right now, it's solidified as my top uh, expensive game. Uh, so there you guys have it. Uh, six games that cost a hundred bucks or more. Uh, like I said before, are these games worth the price of admission? Some. Bucky, I would say, is definitely worth the price of admission. Uh, the rest I'd have to stew on a little bit. Kickmaster, absolutely worth triple digits in my mind. Uh, great game. The rest, play them however you can. I'm a big physical collector. I like to have the cartridges. I've got a lot of cartridges. Um, so I, I chose to seek them out and I'm, I'm glad I did. Uh, I got decent deals on all these. Uh, there's a little bit of flaws in some of the cartridges that if you look close enough, you can see, but they're, they're to my liking as far as condition goes. Uh, but there you guys have it. Bilbo's most expensive NES games. Thanks for watching. Drop a thousand dollars worth of cartridges. Oh.